everyone. Maureen from Sophia Street Studio here and today we are talking flowers. All different kinds of flowers that you can make with scraps and things that you have from around your house. You really don't need to go out and buy anything. This is a stash buster kind of project and it's use up what you have. Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without kind of project. Those are my favorite. This is going to be a whole video series. I'm going to show you how to make at least four different kinds of flowers from your scraps or old clothing or old material or old ribbon that you have lying around the house. At least four. We may come up with a, a fifth or sixth as the series goes on. But the first video that I'm going to show you how to make are these flatter type ruffle flowers. This just happens to have a, a button center, but I'm going to show you all different kinds of centers. That one has a bead. This one has ruffled edges. So those are all flat flowers. The next tutorial that I'm going to show you is how to make more ruffled, more dimensional flowers that have whoopsies, <laughs> that have more depth to them. There are three Aurora Borealis beads in this one. And this, I'm excited about, glitter. A glitter ruffle flower. This is chunky glitter. We have tulle and fabric flowers. This one is flannel and tulle. You can tell with a broken jewelry center. And then this is one of my favorites. It's denim and tulle. And the one of the later tutorials is going to be how to turn an old pair of jeans that you don't need anymore into gorgeous flowers. This is one type and this is another type. This one is made from the hem at the bottom of the jeans. There are so many possibilities of flowers that you can make from an old pair of jeans and there's so much material in a pair that you're going to get tons of beautiful flowers. So I hope you enjoy this series. I'm really looking forward to making it. As I said, the first video that you're going to see is how to make the flat flowers and come join me down at the table and I'll show you how to get started. All right, this is a scrap of fabric that you might have from a different project that's left over. This is longer than the scraps that I was using in some of the other flowers and that's perfectly okay. You're gonna need about 18 to 24 inches of fabric to make this size flower. If you have more fabric, they're gonna be bigger. I wouldn't make them any smaller or they're not going to ruffle properly. You can try, but I don't think they're going to work as well. With my ruler, I have measured 5 eighths of an inch. If you don't have a see-through ruler, that's okay. You can just eyeball it. Not a big deal. Just wanted to give a measurement for those of you who want to be exact. And you'll probably want to use a bigger ruler, but I like this one. Whoops. I like this one because it's clear, and for my little cutting board for the video, this works out. a couple places. This one is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost 10 inches. So let's do two 10 inch strips. That should work out. This cutting board looks really dirty on camera, but it's not really dirty in person. It's clean. It's just been cut on a lot. Again, if you don't have a rotary cutter, not a big deal. You can cut it with scissors. 
However, if you're going to make a lot of these for a project, I really recommend this. It saves so much time. Okay. I thought it would be helpful to change to a black background instead of the white one that I had before. I think it was a little bit difficult to see. Once you have your needle threaded, I have my crochet cotton. You want to put a knot in the end, and it might not hurt to put two knots. I have already have one knot, so I'm just going to add my second one, which didn't line up, which is not a big deal. Sometimes they line up, sometimes they don't. If I don't need that second knot, I will clip it off. The one thing that you want to be very mindful of is the the side of your fabric that you're sewing on because that is really going to mess up your flower. You want to make sure that you sew on the same side. I'm a lefty so I sew up this left side. If you're right handed you're probably going to sew up the right side. The first stitch is going to be up from the bottom because you want your knot to be hidden on the wrong side of the fabric and pull it through and from here you don't want to pull too hard or you might rip your stitches out you're going to do a basic running stitch and a running stitch is down up down up I'll show you here for those of you who need a refresher my stitches are about a quarter inch wide or half an inch if you use the metric system. Now I'm going to go up down up I think you can see the stitches. There's one. Then make sure you skip a stitch width. There's the second stitch. I skipped another stitch width and another stitch. Now I'm going to go faster. Skip another width of the stitch again. And once you get good at this and are more comfortable, you're just going to take your needle and move your fabric and up, down, up, down. All the way to the end of the fabric. Now when your needle gets full, you just pull it through. And now that you have several stitches in a row, as you gently pull on this thread, you can see that your flower is starting to form. This is going to be the center of the flower, and then everything else is going to build up underneath it. Okay, next important part is when you get to the end of your scrap. You want to make sure that your needle ends up on the top. You want to end up with an up stitch rather than a down. That's going to be important so that when you pull your next fabric up, this raw edge gets hidden. It will make more sense when you add the next piece of fabric.
And as you can see, we're getting our gathers. Now you don't want to pull it too tight because if you pull it too tight you're going to not end up with a flat flower. You're going to end up with more of a ruffled flower. Which is beautiful as well, but we're going to make those in a, in a separate tutorial. And there you go. The next piece, it's very important, it's the opposite. Instead of starting from the bottom, you're starting from the top. And that is, again, so you can hide the raw edge. So you go down, up, and then continue with your running stitch. And as you can see, I'm sewing pretty close to the edge. You don't want to sew, com sew completely close that it starts unraveling on you, but you don't want to waste you don't want your stitches to you to be too close to the middle or they're going to show. Now, when you pull your second piece, your raw edges face the back and then you just see prettiness. You don't see this raw edge. That's why you have to make sure that you go down on the second strip and every other subsequent strip. Okay. Make sure also as you add more strips that you, that you keep your finished flower towards your body. If you put it over here, things are going to get twisted and then they're not going to line up. I'm going to finish stitching this. When you get to the end, you want to make sure that you end up with an up stitch. Now don't knot anything off. Leave everything attached. And at this point, you're going to start futzing, which is an official flower term, to form your flower. You're going to need your glue gun. I have that extra knot that I need to get rid of. Okay. At this point, I like to trim this into a curve. This is going to be, this is the very first part that you sewed on where your knot was, and I like to cut this into a curve and cut off that blunt raw edge. It just makes it a little prettier. It's an option. You don't have to. Also, you can see I have some spare threads here. If you don't want a fringed edge, just cut them off. If you do want a fringed edge, go ahead and pull them off and it'll start to unravel. I'm going to cut these. Okay, take your center and start wrapping in a circle underneath. You have to play around with it. All of these are going to end up looking a little bit different. Now here
is where you have your two ends coming together of the where you joined one to the other to I'm not speaking clearly this is where the first and the second strip joined again I just cut off that little bit and curve it and then it blends in pretty nicely you can always trim that up later too just keep going ruffle a little bit more if you need to I have I made mine a little too tight so I want to pull it back this is turning out to be so pretty again for this flat flatter flower you don't want to you want to make sure it's not pulled too tightly once you're happy with that which I am I say I am and then I keep fussing with it a little bit more <laughs> wasn't roughly enough on that last row Okay. The good thing about flannel and certain fabrics are it sticks together a little bit. If you have a, a more slippery fabric, that part's going to be a little tricky. Now, you want to tuck. The end underneath so you can't see it. So I've hidden my raw end here. And then you simply take your needle and thread and go through some of the other layers and catch the tail here. You want to make sure you don't go all the way through your flower and the needle comes out that way or you're going to see the stitch. But just catch it a little bit. If you're nervous about this part, just go ahead and glue it. I prefer to knot off my thread, but you can glue the end of the thread if you're nervous about this part, if you're not as comfortable with your sewing. Then put a second stitch in, and this time you have a, a loop. Just put your needle through the loop, and that's going to create a knot at the end there. So now that is secure and you can cut off your thread. Again, if that part makes you really nervous, don't do it. Now what I need is a piece of fabric to go on the back. It's going to serve two purposes. It's going to cover up your stitches and it's going to hide all of this. Let me grab that and I'll be right back. All right, from my remaining scrap of fabric, I'm going to cut a little section large enough to cover up the back of my flower. It's always going to vary. You just want to make sure you cut it so it's large enough to cover this and hold all the pieces together. Depending on the length of your strips and how many strips you choose, it's going to be a little bit bigger or smaller, but this should be large enough. and it does not have to be a perfect circle by any means what I like to do is fold it into quarters and you hold the folded edge and you let the raw edges hang out there and you're gonna cut a rounded it's actually a quarter of a circle and this by no means is going to give you a perfect circle, but it's going to get you in the ballpark. It's more of an oval. <laughs> Try it. 
trim it up, but again, it gets you in the ballpark. More, more on track than it would be if I tried to cut it by hand. Okay. Ah, that's perfect. You can put the glue right on your flower. I prefer to put the glue on this piece because it's easier for me to flip, but if I put too much glue, I don't want it to seep through the other side. But whatever way works best for you, either way. And this is what I'm talking about with this glue gun. It just doesn't work very well. Hopefully your glue gun will work better than mine does. Okay. Be very careful you don't burn your fingers. And pop it on the back. And you are good to go. Everything is nice and secure now. Again, you can fuss up into the last minute to make it look the way you want it before that glue sets. Trim off any extra threads. Okay, the only thing that you have left is to pick a center. I have a couple options. I have a bead a hot pink bead, which kind of gets lost in there. It's the right color, but sometimes you want more of a contrast. I have a gold bead because there's some gold in there. That kind of gets lost too. It's a pony bead. What if I put it... That's prettier that way, but again, it still kind of gets lost. I have a large button All right, not a huge fan of that one. Hmm, maybe it's growing on me. And then I have. Oh, woo! That's the winner. I have a white metal button. I think that one looks the prettiest. Really makes a big difference sometimes what center you choose. Put a very small dot. For the center, you need a very tiny dot. And then wind your glue gun around a bit, as you saw me do, so you don't get spider webby strings. And you don't need a lot to secure it, and you don't want a lot. Oh gosh, that button got hot. Because <laughs> it was metal. You don't want a lot, because otherwise it'll seep out around the edges. And there we have our flat flower. They all have their own character and I like how they all turn out different. This is a really fringed one. this one. And this one, as you can see, I pulled some of the threads on the fabric and it has the fringe around the edges. This one ended up being much bigger than the other ones, but I really like that one as well. I also wanted to show you how you can get differences within the same flower. This one I let the gathers out a great deal and it ended up being much much flatter. This one, same process, I just pulled it a little bit tighter and it became much more ruffled. So depending on what you want your final look to be, I wanted to show you the difference. Two different flowers, same type of fabric, 
The only difference was I pulled this one tighter and it had more ruffles. And this one I let a little bit looser to show you what that would look like. If you want a much flatter flower for an embellishment, this one is going to be a little bit, a little bit more dimensional. Not a ton, but. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I would love to see what kind of flowers that you make. Please feel free to tag me on Instagram, Sophia Street Studio, and I will definitely leave you a comment and let you know that I saw your picture. Also leave any questions below in the comments box if you're having any trouble or you have some tricks that I didn't share that others might find useful. I would really appreciate that. Have a wonderful day and stay tuned for the second tutorial in the series that's close to this. It's the same type of process, but you're going to end up with a couple extra steps in order to make ruffly flowers. You're going to need the same kind of scraps, but you will need if you want to make this one, you want to want some fine glitter or some chunky glitter will work as well. But this will be in the next tutorial. I hope you join me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.